Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, we're a week in and very excited about this team. You can tell we have a lot of experience returning. We've really just got been able to hit the ground running and get really competitive in practice. And um, I think our team understands now what it takes to get to the Final Four and to win a national championship. So it's been um, pretty great just to be around a team that wants to be great. All the positives, all the good things that happened in the last year, now they don't mean anything, though, when you're on the exactly. court. How do, does, does that affect anything? And, and, and do you have to do anything different mentally to kind of – or is it good to have a veteran group to say, hey, that was last year? You know, I think it's good to have a veteran group. I, I realize that, you know, you don't want to look at last year. We did this, and it's a whole new ball game um, with a new season and some new players. But, like I said, it just understanding what it takes to be great and what it takes to win and – what it takes to make it that far um, is really important. So we know that details matter and everything everything is important. And it comes down to one or two points. That's what it com came down to for us between making the national championship match and not. So I think it's great. But, um, yes, I agree. It's a whole new game and uh, team's new year. For both Elena and Amaya, you're sold out this year it would just talk about what kind of environment that is for y'all going in to play where you know they all in that fcu is just wall to wall with people we're super excited um lnn isn't the biggest arena but it definitely makes it better because all the fans are on top of you makes it really loud and really fun to play with yeah i agree i mean my freshman year for the red and black scrimmage we it'd just be like parents and close friends and now like I think we're expecting there to be tons of people, and that's so exciting and um, a new environment that we can really thrive in. Danny, you do have a lot of experience back and some newcomers, though, that will be. How, how different is this team going to be? You know, you had an identity mm -hmm. last year, and you established that early on. How different will this team be, and maybe in what ways? You know, I, it's hard to say personality-wise. I think we're still pretty new, and we've talked to the team about a theme or, you know, something that we want to look back to or as a group rally around, and we haven't come up with anything yet. Um, but I think that's okay because we want it to be organic and not forced. Um, but, you know, losing Tori and Anna Stevenson, who are both first-team All-Americans, you're going to change their style of play, and we're going to have to make up for those points some some way so we will look a little different on the court and um but we'll be doing some things that you know we've wanted to do we just didn't necessarily need to with Anna and Tori so you'll see a lot more back row attacks and um you know our setter battle is pretty fierce right now so everybody looks really good it's like who's going to win that spot but that'll dictate a little bit our style of play too who who ends up being the starting setter what what is that competition like right now and and kind of go through where where you feel like they are at this point. I've been really impressed with all of them. You know, we have Raquel, who's a fifth year, a grad transfer, so she definitely has the most experience. Um, and then you have Paige Morningstar, who was here last year in the program, so she saw what it took to win, and she got to learn under Tori. And then Ellie Glock, who was here this spring, who's also a transfer, um, who redshirted at USC. So Paige and Ellie have four years of eligibility left, and this is Raquel's last year. So it's, there's an age gap, but um, I would say they're all playing well above their experience level, and they're all really hungry to, to learn and win and make this team better. Um, but I think experience is going to be important for us, especially going into early in the season. Um, but, again, I'm really impressed with all three of them. three, four, you know, ranked three teams in the ACC in the top ten. Just speak of the, the, the strength in this conference yeah, this it's, year. Yeah, it's been inc incredible to see this conference grow and change. You know, when I um, got here six years ago, it's we didn't have any teams in the top 25 that year. So to see ten, three in the top ten and, you know, I think there's a couple more that are going to be in the top 25 real quick once the season gets, gets started. So it's – definitely tough and that's what we want you know we need each other to continually get better nationally and you know recruits want to come play in tough conferences and against great competition night in and night out and then that just draws more fans so it's it's awesome to see how much it's grown
speaking of that, Amaya and Elena, just can you guys talk about the schedule and early on not being home for a, a couple of weeks early on and just how tough it is uh, that the, the, the preseason schedule or the early season schedule, I guess? Yeah, I think it'll definitely be an adjustment at first. But, um, I mean, last year we had to go to Arizona State. And um, I think away trips initially are really good for team bonding. And, you know, you're staying in a hotel, you're on a bus, on a plane. So I think um, having those away trips early on is actually helpful to build the team culture. I agree with Amaya. Um, it's going to be tough not having, like, our fans supporting us. We're just going to have our parents there. Um, it's going to help us in the long run with the team culture, like she said, but definitely going to be a tough preseason. Of the newcomers and freshmen that are on the roster, Coach, give us maybe one or two names that we'll learn to know very well and be very excited about this year. You know, I talked about the setters. You have Raquel, Lazaro, and Ellie Glock, our new setters, and, um, you know, there's a chance they could both see a lot of playing time. And then, you know, Ficker and Kong, um, or we call her PK. So she's not a newcomer, but I think fans are going to learn her name real quick. So we expect her to, you know, compete for that middle spot. And Kara Cressy, the other middle who was on our team last year but redshirted. So both those middles are names that, you know, fans are going to learn a lot about early on. And um, they're competing for, for Anna Stevenson's spot, um, for lack of a better – or that's a great analogy. As far as uh, Sydney Shetton coming over from basketball this year, <laughs> play volleyball this year, just talk about her skills and what she's going to bring to the team. Yeah, well, Sydney, you know, had a, almost two years off of volleyball, so she hasn't played in two years. When she got here, she focused only on basketball. So she has a ways to go in her volleyball skill development, but she brings a ton of size and athleticism and, um, you know, I'm just excited to see what she can do, but yeah, she, she makes it tough in practice to get kills against her. But, yeah, she does have some catching up to do. But that's okay, and that's normal. Danny, ideally, would you rather have a, a setter separate herself uh, and be kind of the, the leader, or, or are you okay rotating? You know, I think when you hit season, um, especially after these first couple of weeks of preseason, you want to pretty much get settled on a setter and um, somebody that's going to be running the show and you can get comfortable with. Um, but I don't think it's bad to have a little bit of competition and some rotating early on. And, um, you know, I think it's good for our team to learn how to hit off different setters and to adjust, whereas it was Tori for, you know, two years. So we got really comfortable with the same thing. And it's, it's good to have to adapt a little bit for these guys. But, yes, I think it's like a quarterback. You want to settle in with somebody and um, – you know, run the offense, but you want those backups pushing them hard every single day, and you want your team to be comfortable if we make a switch. When you have a, a season like you did last year, in, I know a lot of it, there was a lot of great leadership that went along. You've got a lot of veterans back. What's, I assume the leadership is good, but how do they kind of manage that leadership? Because there are different veterans, and there's different voices and different opinions. Absolutely. You know, I think – Losing a strong voice of Tori Dilfer and losing just the personality of Anna Stevenson. And then those are the easy ones people look at that we lost. But we had great seniors um, across the board that didn't see a lot of court time that we really, you know, it's different. It's a different vibe in practice. You don't have that. But I do think the veterans have done a good job of, you know, finding their voices and figuring out what works for this team. So we're lucky, you know, Maya was the captain last year, so she's back. And Iko was a captain last year, she's back. And she's working hard to change her leadership style of how that, how it looks like for this team. And then we have some new leaders and Anna DeBeer and Elena who were on the court in big moments that are leading in their own ways. But um, I would love to hear what Amaya thinks about her leadership <laughs> this year so far. <laughs> Um, I mean, I think it's been good. I'm just trying to, you know, connect with the team even more than last year just because we have new freshmen coming in and everything else. And, I mean, this year my goal is to just take, like, a more front-facing approach. Last year, you know, Tori and Anna and Iko kind of took that role. And so I was on, like, not the back burner, but that's 
not the right term, but I was just kind of there in the background. So now this year I'm hoping to kind of learn from them, and I've even faced some Tori and Anna a lot just um, to help with my leadership style and how I can help the team. Elena, how different is it for you, you know, coming in last year as a youngster and, and looking up to, to all the, the leaders that were on this team, and now this year you were a big part of the team last year, but maybe even more so as, as, as kind of a leader? Mm -hmm. um, coming in, it was different, changing positions and everything, but I kind of got to step back and like take it all in, see what the leaders had to say, and now I can be a leader myself after taking after Tori and Anna and Iko and even Amaya has been a great leader. Um, but yeah, it's been different, and I'm going to have to step up this year. Danny, there's no way last year when we talked at the beginning of the year, you thought you were going to go undefeated. Everybody thinks and hopes they are, but you don't really think that. What is a legitimate expectation for this team coming off of knowing what you did last year yeah. and what you have coming back? I, I don't think we will ever talk about wins and losses and that type of an expectation but I do expect this team to be in the hunt so are we in the hunt in November to win the ACC and are we in the hunt to get a top 16 seed so I think it's incredibly difficult to get a top four seed and um, fans and people you know around the program understand that but it is very very hard but I do think we should be in the hunt to get a top 16 seed and host those first and second rounds every year. And like I said, when it comes November, how have we done in the ACC? And do we have a legit chance to close that out and win the conference? Um, and then when you get the tournament, anything can happen. So we've talked about national championship and Final Four. And um, I, I don't want to say that's an expectation, but um, it's definitely a goal and something we're talking about. Did that change at all, though, from uh, from this time last year to oh, yeah. until that? I mean, once you once you taste it one time and you get that close yeah. to it, doesn't the expectation change? Yeah, a little I think bit? once you taste it, you want it again, and once you get so close, like you want to finish the job. So that's a little bit where this team's mindset is. We, it's time for us to finish the job. Um, and last year, we were just hoping to win. You know, either beat K Purdue, Kentucky, or Nebraska, and we ended up winning all three. So your conversation does change a lot after you accomplish that and um, going into the season. We're not talking about just winning one big match in non-conference. We're talking about we got to win them all if we want that top four seed. Daddy, you've uh, got a future volleyball star in the family now. Congratulations on that. <laughs> Thank you. Just kind of talk about that. My husband whole... might say football star, <laughs> preferably, but <laughs> he might play volleyball. You never know. Yeah, you never know. I mean, you... There's a lot of good volleyball players out there that are men. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's talk about the whole experience. And now going into a year of coaching, you know, and obviously you kind of maybe glancing up into the stands if you hear a cry or something, yeah. you know. Um, now, you know, motherhood has been fun, and it hasn't really changed my job or the way I view my job. And, you know, I I love these girls, and this is, they're my family too. So it's just like a blended family now. Um but luckily, I have a pretty good baby. He sleeps through the night, and so I haven't been grouchy in practice <laughs> or overtired. Um, so I think it's been it's been good, and um, I'm excited that he has a chance to you know grow up around athletes. Amaya, what does it take for this team, as Danny was talking about, to finish the job? What does it take for you guys to to get to the point where you're in the hunt late in the season? I would say just building confidence over time. I mean, like she said, we're trying to have, trying to kind of replace some spots and fill some roles. And I think over time, just building confidence will really help that. Um, I know last year going to the Final Four, that's somewhere we had never been and somewhere you always dream of being at as a kid. So I think now that most of us have been there, we can kind of, we have that confidence once we get back and then we can kind of, you know, bring our teammates into that so they don't feel, you know, oh, my gosh, this is such a big stage. I'm nervous. And, you know, we're like, we've been there. We've done that. Like, we can do this. Uh, talk about the opportunity to play downtown um, for our regular season match when we play Notre Dame. Yeah. I'll start first. So, yeah, um, we want to move more games to the Yum Center. And, you know, I think that's been a hot topic in the media with, you know, our arena and that it's, 
sold out. First of all, everyone needs to know there still will be tickets available game of. And if you do have season tickets and you can't make the game, please sell those back to the university so we can have butts in the seat. But you know, we are excited about moving downtown and um, having a game there and sharing. I say sharing our product. I, you know, I know we're we're athletes, but we are putting on a show for fans. So I want as many people to come see that as as they can. Um, and I know we, we looked at moving a few more games down there, and it just didn't work this year with the Yum um, Center schedule. So we'll look to build on that in the future. But having a place to start, and, and we need the fans here to show that show our administration and you know show the city that you know we can draw big crowds at the Yum Center if we want to make that a more permanent thing. Danny, how do you or how have you capitalized? on the momentum as far as a program because obviously every milestone you get to when you mm -hmm. got to 20 and 0 when you got to 28 and 0 you know when you're undefeated it, it got to be more coverage and it got to be not only local but national how did that help in recruiting or has it helped the, the momentum yeah i definitely think it helps um momentum of the program you you put a lot of uh you know you get a lot of eyes on your program and recruits take notice and recruits want to be part of something great and play with great players so they got to see our players live and see that we can compete with anybody um it's just a different ball game like we got the interest now we got to close them and um that's where it started starts with the interest so it's helped with recruiting and more importantly it's been awesome with this the community and i know these guys have felt it i felt it when we're out at a restaurant somebody will come up and say great season coach or it's so fun to watch your team and you know that's when i when i got to louisville something that it was like it was a goal, but something I thought about. Like I hope that someday people at a random restaurant recognize who I am. That's where our program's at. And so I see these guys feel the same way. And it's cool when, you know, you're out to eat and somebody asks for your autograph if you're Elena and, you know, kids want to be like her. So um, it's made a huge difference in the city.